So today's job is going to be replacing this three port valve, this three port diverter valve. Um, I've been suffering from a sticky valve. I'm pretty sure it's not the head, it's actually the valve body. So that means I'm gonna have to completely drain down the central heating system. Well, not necessarily completely, but I need to get the water level down low enough that I can take all this apart and replace this, this valve. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is isolate the feed and expansion tank. And luckily I've got an isolator valve here. So I can turn that off. Okay, so I've isolated now the, um, the feed tank. Now, if you didn't have one of these, you'd have to hold up the ball cock up in the tank upstairs to stop it obviously refilling when you drain down the system. One of the things I wanna do is at the moment it's set on the water position. So if I'm gonna drain down the system, I need to make sure we're on the mid position. Um, otherwise we're only gonna drain the um, hot water circuit. Now there is a lever here on the side, which you can use, but what I'm gonna do is take the head off. So there's a button underneath here, which I can press on this particular one. This is a, a Drayton. Press the button and then you just pull it and it just comes off. Okay, so you can see the button there just basically moves that plastic clip. So let's just put the head down. Uh, I think the other thing to remember is uh, to turn the boiler off. I have actually turned it off already at the main, so there's no electricity. Um, and then this is the problem. We've got this little spindle here, which the the head the, the head um, actuate, actuator rotates. Now you're supposed to better change this by, by hand. And you can see mine is pretty tight. In fact, I can't turn it at all. So I've actually been using WD-40 to, time to free it up. But that only lasts for a certain amount of time. Um, and then it seizes. And what, I'm, what I, the problem I have is that the the motor the motor and the valve can't turn this, so that it it I end up with no heating coming on basically because it's stuck on like the, um, the the water position. So if I just use some some pliers, I can actually turn it. It doesn't. You don't have to turn it very far. There you go. It's literally just a tiny little turn like that. But it was. Let's see if I can turn it with my finger now. Yes, I can just about turn it with my finger now, but it's very stiff. So I'm hoping that by replacing this this valve with a new one, my problems will be solved. Uh, so what I need is probably want to put it in the mid position. So I need to kind of put it halfway really in between the two stops. Okay, so probably about there somewhere. Uh, right, that's that for that bit. Need to go downstairs now, connect up the hose to the stopcock and drain down the system. Okay, so I've drained the system down now. I'm getting ready to disconnect this three port valve. I've got my new valve here. You can see it's a, a direct replacement. And interestingly, I can change the valve, valve position really easily just with my fingers. I can just twist it. You can see it doesn't move very far, but it's it's really easy to twist. Whereas this one is, is really quite quite stiff. I can do it now because I've loosened it up, but I couldn't move that at all earlier. Um, now, if we look inside, this is the interesting part. You can see there's a kind of um, a black rubbery thing, and then you just move it. When you twist the spindle, you can see how 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 little it moves. So obviously, mid position. If you see there, you can see you've got access to both ports. You move it to one side, and it closes one off, and vice versa. When you look down inside, if I turn it, you can see it just opens and closes just like that. Same on the other side. I don't think I've seen many videos that actually show these these work. I've seen a lot of videos that show people replacing the head, which has got the motor in it, but I don't think I've actually seen anyone replace the actual valve body itself. Um, now normally they come as a as a kit, so you, I think I've seen them for about sixty, seventy pounds. So you get the head and the valve together. Um, I haven't seen many places just selling the valve on its own, so I bought this, I think I just bought it off eBay in the end, it was brand new, but it, it came without the head, it was about £20 I think in total. Um, I'm pretty sure the head's okay actually, that has been replaced in the past. Um, I think when I had a British gas contract the guy came out and replaced it, um, but it's never actually really fixed the root cause of the problem which I think is the valve. So I'm hoping by replacing that I won't have any issues in the morning because the valve hasn't opened. So like I said, I've drained the system down now. So I'm gonna start disassembling this and hope I don't get flooded 
and see how we get on. All right, here we go. So you can see I managed to get the three port valve disconnected. Um, I didn't actually have a large enough spanner. My biggest spanner is 24 mil. So I ended up having to use a, uh, an adjustable spanner just to loosen off the nuts. And then with a good bit of wiggling and jiggery pokery, it all came apart. And very little water came out actually. So I put a towel down and I've got a little, a little, little bucket. And that's it, that's all that's come out. So I obviously drained it down well. Although the water that came out was pretty black. Now, when I drained down this, the, the system, the water came out clear. So, you know, very little signs of corrosion. I used inhibitor anyway. Um, but what I'm wondering is if um, the hot water circuit has never really properly been drained down. So we've got like a lot of um, horrible black gunge that's come out. Uh, yeah, see it's all pretty black in there as well. Um, I mean the valve is actually working now, and I had to fiddle it, but it just seems it was well, it's still a bit stiff actually. So I think hopefully I'm really hoping that by replacing this it will fix my problem with it being a bit sticky. Yeah, it does feel a bit sticky actually when I try and turn it. It takes a little bit of extra oomph to move it. So that's that disconnected. Uh, now I'm going to clean all this up. I mean, it's hopefully nice and clean. Now, what I was planning to do was replace these compression washers. Uh, you, have to, you normally have to cut them off with a little saw. Um, but actually, I'm going to try and cheat because they actually look like they're in pretty good condition. Uh, it was difficult to tell, really, with all the gunk on. Um, so, I don't know, it's a bit of a gamble. Um, I don't know, I might try and reuse them. Um, Probably lots of plumbers are looking at this now, shouting, going, no, 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 cut them off, put fresh ones on. I mean, I do have fresh ones here, but I always find it's a bit of a pain cutting them off. Um, I mean, I've got a little hacksaw here. Oh, oh, maybe I will cut them off. Yeah, I'll cut them off. I'll do it properly. Otherwise, it could end up springing a leak. Uh, take a little bit of time, but we'll get there. Right, so once I've got it all prepared and everything, I'll do another little video to show you all putting it back together again. Okay, cheers. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've actually cut off the old uh, compression washers now. I thought, oh, well, I'll do it properly. You see, so I've put the fresh ones on. I've cleaned it all up, given it a, sanded it all down. So the uh, the new washers are nice and loose. Uh, don't forget to put the nuts on as well. Uh, now I did learn a little tip a while ago, and that was to just put some silicon sealant on the shoulder of each of these. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any at the moment. So I'm just gonna nip out down the shop, see if I can get a little tube of silicon. Um, and then I'll tighten this all this up and then hopefully we should be good to go. Okay, so I've got the valve back in place. It took a bit of jiggery pokery. Everything's ready to tighten up and I've smothered the um, compression bearings in this stuff. Fernox LSX, which is a jointing compound. So it's, see, it's got a consistency of like um, clear silicon, um, probably a silicon based. Now I've just got to tighten it all up and hope it doesn't leak. Okay, so here we are. So all nicely tightened up, tightened them up as far as I can. Um, obviously I've got this, the jointing compound in there as well, the sealant. And I can twiddle the, I can adjust the valve on the spindle really easily with my fingers, which I was really struggling to do with the old one. So I'm really hoping this works. So uh, put it back on the hot water position, which is where the lever was pointing to see on the, on the water. So let's just, this should just clip back on now. Um, yeah, so let's see how we go on. Yep, there we go. Ah, there we go, clicked. Right, now all that's left to do is to refill the central heating system by opening up the isolator valve um, and let it refill for a bit. I'll do that in a, in a bit actually, because I've got another job I'm doing at the moment. I'm just gonna replace a radiator. Once I've done that, then I'll open up the isolator, refill the system and see if it all works. Hopefully by then the jointing compound will have set and with a bit of luck, we won't have any leaks. God help we don't have any leaks. <laughs> I'll video it when I do it. All right, let's turn on. <sighs> The feed from the feed and expansion tank and see if we get any leaks from my three-way valve.
Okay. You can hear the radio is filling up. We can get this valve to turn into mid position. Look, 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 look. Okay, this is all dry so far. <laughs> 